Good day everyone, Sir Janus here and welcome to another episode of Einsteinatics TV. This time, we are going to focus on electromagnetism in everyday life, which is the focus for Quarter 2, Module 6. To start with, here are the focus for Grade 10, Science for Quarter 2. So, it is divided into three topics, namely, electricity and magnetism, electromagnetic spectrum, and light. You're already done with light and electromagnetic spectrum. This time, we are going to focus on electricity and magnetism. So, it has the following contents, magnetic fields and forces, and electromagnetic induction. The essential questions for these specific topics are as follows. How are electricity and magnetism related? How does a generator produce electricity? And how does a motor work? For us to have a strong grasp of our present topic, let us explore the world of electricity and magnetism. We are going to focus on these three terms, electrostatics, electric current, magnetic field, and current. When we talk about electrostatics, it refers to electric charge which is produced by electric force and that it is also produced through electric field and electric potential. So this refers to the positive and negative electric charges and the attraction and repulsion between charges. For electric current, you have already done this one with uh, grade, when you were in grade 8. So this pertains to the electric circuit or connection the electric power and electrical energy and of course it is governed by ohm's law and of course for magnetic field and current so it is divided into magnetic field and electromagnetic induction so magnetism which has magnetic field magnetic forces and of course the current and magnetism if it is combined it will produce electromagnets and if there is a force between magnets on the current then that is motors and of course for electromagnetic induction the Faraday's law which is the basis for the generator and transformers and for power transmission when you were in grade 9 your topics revolve around power generation transmission and distribution you were asked about these questions as to where does electricity come from, how is it produced, and how does it get to our home. And now, for grade 10, your topic would revolve now on electromagnetic induction. You can answer the question as to what happens inside the generator and hopefully answer the question how does it produce electricity at the end of the video. And since Great in Science also deals with electric motor, you are also going to answer the question, how else is electricity changed into other forms of energy that will be useful to us? For today's video, we have three main topics that we are going to focus on. The first lesson is on basic principles of magnetism. Second would be on electromagnetism and for the third one on motors and generators. Let's start the video on the short history of magnetism. Thales of Meletus is said to be the first one to coin the term magnets, which comes from the ancient Greek city of Magnesia. This is where many natural magnets were found. We now refer to these natural magnets as lodestones, which means to lead or attract. This type of materials contains magnetite, which is a natural magnetic material. Another theory to where the term magnet originated is from 23 to 79 AD. Pliny the Elder wrote of a hill near the river Indus that was made entirely of stone that attracted iron. He wrote a story of a shepherd named Magnus, hence the term magnet. And as early as 121 AD, Chinese already knew that an iron rod 
which had been brought near one of these natural magnets would acquire and retain the magnetic property. They already used it for navigation for exploration of nearby islands. You might be wondering what is a magnet? When you talk about magnets, this refers to materials or object that produces a magnetic field. Then what is a magnetic field? When you talk about magnetic field, it is an invisible but it is responsible for the most notable property of a magnet. A force that pulls on other ferromagnetic materials such as iron, steel, nickel, cobalt, and others attracts or repels other magnets. There are several types of magnets. The first one is what you call as natural. When you talk about natural magnets, these are found naturally in the ground and refers to rocks and contains iron, lodestone, and magnetites. On the other hand, we also have temporary magnets. So this is produced by stroking a soft iron object with a permanent magnet. This is weak and only lasts a short time. The third type of magnet is permanent. This type of magnets are man-made and they hold their magnetism when it is heated in an oven at 2250 degrees Celsius. Another type of magnet is what you call as electromagnet. This is only temporary because as long as there is a current, then there is magnetism. Magnets can also be divided by its shapes. So there are several types such as bar magnet, the horseshoe magnet, rod magnet, ring magnet, disc magnet, and one magnet. There are three types of magnetic materials. The first one is diamagnetic, the second is paramagnetic, and the third would be ferromagnetic materials. Ferromagnetic materials refers to those materials that are strongly attracted to magnets. Examples of these are iron, steel, cobalt, and nickel. Paramagnetic materials, on the other hand, are slightly attracted by strong magnets. Examples of this include wood, aluminum, platinum, and oxygen. Diamagnetic, the last type of magnetic material, are slightly repelled by strong magnets. This includes zinc, bismuth, sodium chloride, and water. Because of the composition that makes up a magnet, it produces now the so-called magnetic force or the force of a magnet which exerts on either another magnet, on iron or similar metal, and on moving charges. When we talk about magnetic force, it only has two effects. It could either attract or repel one another. One important concept to remember that when light poles, they would repel, and on light poles, it would attract. You might be wondering why does this happen, and from where does this force come from? Magnetic force is made possible because of a magnetic field. So magnetic force comes from the magnetic field that surrounds a magnet. Take note that a magnetic field is invisible, and that it is strongest at the poles either in the north or the south, and weak where lines are far apart. And as you can see from the diagram, the property of a magnet that when it is in light poles, they would repel as you can see from north to north and south to south. But unlike poles, it would attract. You might be wondering why is it that light poles repel and unlike poles attract. So here is the answer. We all know that a magnetic field exerts a force on other fields. So when like poles repel, it is because the field lines push on each other and unlike poles attract because its field lines comes together. So if you have noticed here, through the use of iron fillings, you could clearly see the magnetic field that it produced. So as you can see here that unlike poles attract because the feed lines come together wherein like poles repel because as you could clearly see 
that the field ones push on each other. Another question that we should answer when pertaining to magnetic domains is that what makes something magnetic? Or where does the ability of a magnet to attract another material comes from? This ability comes from the spin of its unpaired electrons. As you can see, electron spin aligns, atoms creates a magnetic field. Between a magnet and a non-magnetic material. When we talk about a magnet, it has a material that has all its atoms aligned in a single domain. And that makes it magnetic. Given the different pictures, which do you think is magnetic? The first picture or the second picture? Definitely, the second picture is the one that is magnetic because all its atoms are aligned on a single domain. It is also important to note that the Earth itself has its own magnetic field. This is called as the magnetosphere due to its iron core. And because of this, it allows compasses to work and it also protects us from cosmic radiation. One evidence that the Earth has its own magnetic field is the presence of Aurora Borealis or also known as the Northern Lights. This time, let us focus on the second lesson which focuses on electromagnetism. First, let us bridge the gap between electricity and magnets. It is very important to remember that electromagnetic force or the forces of magnetism and electricity or comes from electric charges. As you can see, magnetism comes from electron spinning and electricity comes from electrons traveling. In the same way that spinning electrons create a magnetic field, Traveling electric charges also create a magnetic field. The first one to discover this is Hans Christian Orsted in 1820. He discovered that an electric current near a compass causes the compass needle to be deflected. Orsted's experiment showed that every electric current has a magnetic field surrounding it, thus bridging the gap between electricity and magnetism and connecting the two. It is also important to remember that according to the right hand rule, the electron current in a wire and the magnetic field it generates are perpendicular to each other. As you can see here, here is the electric current and this would be now the magnetic field. From Orsted's experiment, rise electromagnet. When we talk about electromagnet, this is a coil of current carrying wire with an iron core. It is also important to remember that the more turns, the stronger the magnet. As you can see, the more coils that you have wrapped around the nail, then the stronger your electromagnet would be. So when an electric current is passed through a coil of a wire wrapped around a metal core, a very strong magnetic field is produced and as long as there is a supply of electricity it would produce magnetism and as you can see if it would be turned off then it would drop the paper clips another important concept that you should remember when dealing with electromagnet is that as the motion of the electrons around the wire or the current increases then the strength of the magnetic field also increases and the first one that we have discussed wherein the number of coils increase the electromagnetic strength increases to sum it up there are two factors that affects an electromagnet the first one would be the current and the second one would be the number of coils here are some applications for electromagnet 
Electromagnets are commonly used in junkyards in order to pick up large scrap metals. Electromagnets is also being utilized in the technology behind electric bells or buzzers. Other applications of electromagnet includes the technology behind speakers and of course the fastest train in the world which is the maglev train or the magnetic levitation train. This time, let us proceed to our last lesson which focuses on electrical motors and generators. So what are electric motors? When we talk about electric motors, this uses the sideways push of a magnetic field to turn a current carrying wire loop. It is also important to remember that an electric motor is a device which changes electrical energy into mechanical energy. Based on our previous discussion, we have learned that it was Orsted who discovered the relationship between electricity and magnetism. This time, another scientist discovered the relationship between magnetism to electricity. It was Michael Faraday who also built the first electric motor and discovered magnetic induction. When we talk about magnetic induction, it is the effect of producing an induced current and that the strength of the current depends on the strength of the magnetic field and the speed of the wire's motion. Another application of electromagnetic induction or the discovery of Faraday is the utilization or the production of generators. When we talk about generator, it is used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy through the use of electromagnetic induction. There are two types of generators. The first one is what you call as AC generator or also known as alternating current generator. This type of generator, the charge flows first in one direction then in another. And this is used by most power plants today in order for us to have the electricity. Based on the diagram, as you can see here, that the boiler would provide the necessary mechanical energy in order to turn this turbine. And this one, the magnet, through its movement, would now produce electricity. The next type of generator is what you call as DC generator or the direct current. This type of generator, the charge flows in only one direction and out of the generator and it is only used in smaller applications. So what is the difference between motors and generators? It is important to remember that when you talk about generators, this convert mechanical energy into electrical energy using an electromagnet. On the other hand, electric motors uses electrical energy through an electromagnet to create mechanical energy. That's it That's for, it for our, our session. session. Thank you, Thank for, you watching. for watching. Please do Please not forget, do not forget to, to click like, like and, subscribe and subscribe. Ring the bell ring to, the be, bell notified to be notified of, of more upcoming, upcoming videos. videos. I'm Synatics. I'm Synatics. Out. Out. Ha, ha, ha.